I, I think last time we looked at develop, uh, I ended with developing a lifestyle of prayer. And uh, we looked at how we must desire to develop. If you have, if you want to develop a life, lifestyle of prayer, you need to desire, you need to have a desire for that. It doesn't just happen. It must, uh, we must desire and pursue it and then get into a disciplined time, a, a, a prayer life, a, you know, a consistent, be consistent with your uh, praying, be consistent with your desire and keep moving step by step, moving forward and also develop a prayer time that suits you. Uh, choose the most uh, free time that you could have, you know, like free, the, again, you have to free yourself up for prayer. It doesn't happen. You have to be intentional and uh, develop a prayer time that suits you and have a prayer time that is that fits your lifestyle, you know, how busy you are, how involved you are. You take those things into consideration and then come up with that time and, and, and stay with it. Once you commit, commit yourself to your prayer time, prayer life, just stay with it. It's important. Of course, I'm, what I'm talking about is, of course, we need to pray all the time. Just praying in tongues, talking to the Lord constantly. There, It should be a, uh, that kind of thing. But however, we need to have a time set aside for your personal devotion, study of the word, praying together so that you develop to become a man of prayer, a person of prayer. Don't be in intimidated by your lack of experience. You know, sometimes uh, uh, when we talk about praying, we, we, some people, sometimes we get intimidated by the prayer lives of others. Uh, once again, if it is hard for you, you're just beginning to uh, start praying. The best thing is to to, to uh, pray with friends. Take time to pray with friends. Don't, uh, don't let your time be always talking and doing stuff, but also take time to pray with friends. And, and when you start praying with friends, pay attention to their prayers. Think on, you know, just try to, un to, to grasp what they are praying about. And then you follow suit, pray those same kind of prayers. You know, it's, it's not mimicking actually, but it is like praying in the lines that they are praying. And that's the way you kind of get into, uh, to develop that kind of experience. So you do not need to have a lot of experience to pray. You know, just start praying. And when you get together with others and pray, you tend to learn more and get freed up more. Slowly increase the time of prayer, step by step, gradually increase your time of prayer. And you know what the wonderful thing is, prayer is a habit forming thing. The more you pray and draw close to God, the more you desire to pray, and your prayer for will in the desire for your prayer will increase, you know, and so that's a, that's a wonderful thing. So today, let me deal with you uh, on another subject, and that is an em empowered prayer life. An empowered prayer life. Our lives of prayer should be, uh, should be powerful, uh, you know, our times of prayer should be powerful. It should not, you know, we should not be falling asleep in between a time of prayer. Sometimes people fall asleep in time of prayer. So we, we shouldn't do that. We need, to, uh, you, we need to have an empowered prayer life. When we take a look at Second Chronicles chapter 7, verses 20 to chapter, Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 22 to 4, um, um, some men came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you from 
Edom, from the other side of the sea, it is already in horizon in Hazazan Tamar. Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. The people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. Now, uh, <clears throat> King Jehoshaphat was no great preacher, but he was a man who loved God. He was a man who believed in God and believed in prayer. So when, when, when this attack, when these enormous three armies, as it were, came against the King Jehoshaphat, he, uh, he, he feared at the beginning, but he looked to the Lord. He said he resolved to inquire of the Lord and he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. He, he, he took that step to to move into prayer. That's something we, which is very important. We must take a, a positive stand. You know, it's, it's not like, will it happen or you know what? I, I don't think I will. No, you shouldn't resign. We shouldn't resign. We must stand firm and trust in the Lord. And Joshua, Joshua, Joshua found himself encountering the biggest challenge of his life. What made him turn to God the way he did? How did he acquire such confidence in God? In Second Chronicles 17, 3 to 4 says, the Lord, the Lord was with Jehoshaphat because in his early years he walked in the ways of his life, of his father David, and followed. See, he had a great example, and his great example was his patriarch, David. And, and David was a man of given to trusting in God. And prayer. Whenever he found himself in difficulty, he called upon the name of the Lord. He had a great devotional life. He had a great life of meditation. So, and and uh, of course, uh, King Jehoshaphat learned from his great grandfather how to how to develop a good prayer life. And then um, he, in his early, he walked in his, in the ways of his uh, father David had followed. He did not consult the Baals, but sought the Lord God of his father and followed his commands. You know, during those early days of the kings of Israel, they followed the Baal gods and, and they, they started following molten images and did all kinds of uh, sacrifice to other gods, human sacrifice and all that. But very rarely a, a, a king arose with that kind of uh, desire to seek the face of God. And that uh, King Jehoshaphat was that man. The key to King Jehoshaphat's faith lies in, the, in his daily walk with God. Last time we saw how Enoch, you know, he walked with God. He... He talked to God every day. He walked with God. He, he directed his heart and heart's desire towards God. And, and, and therefore, God really blessed him and made him a great, great man. So we may not bow down to idols, but idols can mean anything that takes the place of God in our lives. You know, uh, whatever we choose to do this in, you know, in place of, Prayer is an idol. Whatever distracts us from God, whatever distracts, whatever takes us, uh, takes our attention away from our walk with the Lord becomes an idol. And, uh, but King Jehoshaphat, although he, uh, although there were many different uh, kings who would have lived in a way that was ungodly. King Jehoshaphat desired that he will have, he had this godly example of King David and he thought he will follow uh, that way. And are there habits we need to get rid of? That's something that we need to ask. Very early 
in our prayer lives, you know, if we, if we are compromising, if we are compromising with habits uh, and friends, not that we couldn't have friends, not that we shouldn't have friends, we do need to have friends, but make sure that your friends are not pulling you away from the presence of God and they are not pulling you away from the ways of God. That, that we need to choose in, in the early years of our lives, you know, and uh, that's very important. I remember, I mean, I have two brothers uh, who are not too older than me, like we were two years apart. Um, and, and they always, um, <clears throat> they were walking in un ungodly ways. They had all kinds of practices. They had friends. They had all kinds of fun. But I chose in the early years of my life to walk with the Lord. I was 12 years old. I, I read the word and sang worship to God and, and kept praying. And God always found a blessed, the, the, the Lord really blessed me in whatever I do. But my two brothers, they failed. You know, they, they, they had too much of things going on, distractions, and they failed. But I, I did well in my studies and whatever I did, God just made me prosper because I sought the Lord. Uh, we need to come before him as children, you know, to, to, to have an empowered prayer life, what we need to do is we need to come before him as his children. Jesus taught uh, uh, in the Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven, you know, uh, Jesus <clears throat> taught his disciples to have God as their Father, and, and be sure that, um, that they prayed and gave glory to God. Jesus taught us to approach God as our Father, which conveys love and intimacy. It's not religion, but it's not doing a religious thing, but it is um, walking in intimacy with God. And it's a really important thing that we need to do. Jesus taught us to approach God as our Father. On many occasions, we find Jesus addressing God as his Father. You see how when you really look through the Gospels, you will find that Jesus uh, went into the, uh, spent, went into the mountains and spent the whole night in prayer. And he was found coming down from the mountains after he had spent so much, long a time of prayer. And the disciples most often used to look for him. And then they, they would say things like, where were you? We were looking for you. You know, uh, uh, as if they, did, they didn't know where he was. You know, uh, so uh, they, 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 won, they did just, uh, not want to do what Jesus did. They were they were having maybe like a you know free time. Uh, they were going on a ride as it were with Jesus. But Jesus, uh, when even during the during his uh, just before Jesus was crucified at the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus told his disciples to to wait and pray, and he took a, a distance away. And he was praying, and when he came back, he found them asleep. And he could he asked them, "Couldn't you watch with me for one hour?" See, they were so their sorrow had got a hold of them. The fear had got a hold of them, and they just fell asleep. They they were too tired to talk of, to talk to the Lord. And Jesus said, "You must pray." lest you enter into temptation. You know, uh, temptation comes when our minds are not stayed on the Lord. When our minds are wandering, temptations come. And temptations have a way of taking complete control 
over us. On many occasions, we find Jesus addressing God as his father, approaching in the simplicity and confidence of a child. He had so much confidence in God, and he prayed and talked to the Lord. Um, in John chapter 11, 41 to 42, we see at the grave of Jesus, of Lazarus, Jesus lifted up his voice, eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. Now, Jesus was about to, to call Lazarus back to life. And he lay in the tomb there about three or four days in the tomb. And Jesus says, before he calls out to Lazarus, he talks to the Lord. He didn't have to do that. He was in very much fellowship with God. But he says, Jesus, God, I'm talking to you. I'm, I'm talking to you. I'm praying because I want these people to realize want these people to realize that I'm in good standing with you and that you hear my prayers. And then he, after he prayed that prayer to the Father, he calls out to Lazarus, come forth, and Lazarus came out of the grave. It's amazing. Uh, when we have our daily walk with him, um, when we have our daily walk with him, challenges mean nothing to us. We have that confidence, you know. It's not arrogance, but confidence in our faith in God that when we are in a talking, walking relationship with God daily, we do not have to fear, but we can walk with confidence knowing that God, I know you are with me. I know you will answer my prayer. I know that you will guide me by the power of your Holy Spirit. Jesus, I, Jesus said, I said this for the benefit of the people standing here. See, I'm not, you know, it's not that I don't have confidence in you. I'm just saying, Father, so that these people who are standing and watching what's happening, do realize that I have total confidence in you and you have a relationship with me. And that's very important. The most powerful kind of prayer has nothing to do with style. It doesn't have to do with technique or a particular arrangement or impressive sounding words. It is simply a child crying out, to his father in heaven, you know. So that's a very important thing for us to know that uh, God, you know, because our walk with, our daily walk with, like as I said, Enoch had such confidence he walked with God because every day he walked with God, he talked with God. And that's something that we need to understand. It's not, prayer is not something that we do when it is convenient. Prayer is not something we, that we do when we find the time. It is not something that we do whenever possible. No, it's a commitment. It's a consistent commitment to God. Lord, I will be a man of prayer. Walking in confidence and God moves by His Spirit then. You know, something, uh, another thing, about Jehoshaphat when he, he not only called upon the Lord uh, in prayer and fasted, he, he was a man who worshipped. See, worship, look at how Jehoshaphat prayed in Second Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 6. O oh Lord God our fathers, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations, power and might, are in your hand, and no one can withstand you. You know, so first and foremost, 
sort of praise and worship. His prayer starts with praise and worship. He lifts up his he lifts up, lifts up God in his prayer. It's like Jesus saying, Hallowed be your name. And King Jehoshaphat prayed, Are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. And power and might are in your hand. And no one can withstand you. So here he is worshipping and praising and glorifying God, giving him all the praise and the glory before he even brings up his request to God. And that's something that is amazing, that we be a people of praise and worship. You know, whenever we are faced with a difficulty, uh, King Jehoshaphat didn't say, what God? Why are you allowing these people to do this to me? I'm trying to live a, a quiet life and see these people. Why are you allowing this to happen? No, that's not. Well, that was not his approach. His approach was glorifying God. Putting him high above every other thing in every other way. In our prayer lives, always remember who we are praying to. Always remember who we are praying to. Although we have such a relationship with God, although our, we, have, we are confident in the Lord, we must understand that we give him proper reverence. You know, one of the biggest problems in the church today is that the church has lost a sense of godly fear. You know, that's something that is very, very dangerous. That we lose our godly fear. We shouldn't take him for granted. We remember who we are praying to. He is not our best buddy. You know, that's not the way we approach God. Of course he loves us. Of course he cares for us. Of course, you know, all that is there. You know, but we must not we, you know, have that sense of familiarity where we lose the fear of God. Remember, God, you're talking to the, the creator of the heavens and the earth. And when, when, when John, in the book of Revelation, when John saw Jesus, he fell like a man who was dead. The prophets, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Isaiah, when they approached God, they saw God, but, and when they approached God, they fell before God in godly fear. In our prayer lives, we must remember that He is a King of kings and the Lord of lords. He has delivered the people from terrible situations for thousands of years. Look at how Jehoshaphat prayed. Our God, oh, our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people, Israel, and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? So he had this amazing godly fear. That's something that we need to remember in our worship and in our praise. You know, we are not singing beautiful songs. All that is great. I mean, we have great tunes and beautiful songs, but our hearts must be filled with absolute gratitude and reverence to God. Revering God is a very important thing. The church is at a losing uh, end at this time. The church is not seeing revival the way it should. Why? Because we have lost our godly fear. It's important for us to remember that. In verse 9, he says, uh, If calamity comes upon us, we will stand before this temple and in your presence, and we will cry out to you, to you in our affliction. 
and you will hear us and save us. Now, what is King Jehoshaphat doing there? He is bring, bringing into remembrance a promise that God had given the children of Israel. You said, when we are in your temple and we call upon your name and you, we are in trouble, you will help us. Lord, we are in trouble. We are, we are afflicted. You will hear us now. You know, that's the way King Jehoshaphat prayed. Uh, giving, I mean, worshipping, adoring, revering God, and also holding on to the promises of God and say, God, God, you are a good God. You, you do good things. For we have no power to face this great multitude. See verse 12, it says, We have no power to face this great multitude that is coming against us. Nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are upon you, King Jehoshaphat. Though he was a king, though he could have tried to resist, he put everything completely before God and called upon the name of the Lord God Most High. No power. We do not have any power. This multitude is great. We do not know what to do. He says, our eyes are upon you. We need to take a look, you know, these days, these coronavirus days, when things are really going from bad to worse, and, and, and you get to hear of all the casualties that are happening. You get to hear of job losses and economic problems and situations. No nation is doing well today. All the nations of the world are really, really in trouble today. And, and we don't know what to do. Like King Jehoshaphat, what we need to do is, Lord, we are all in the same situation, but our eyes are upon you. Main thing is that our eyes are upon you. Don't let your eyes go on the coronavirus. Don't let your eyes go on the loss of jobs. Don't let your eyes go on economic recession. All these things. Don't let your eyes go upon, you know, thousands of people. Uh, this has happened. That is happening. This is happening. You know, don't let your eyes go on anything. This is the time when our eyes must be completely on the Lord. King Jehoshaphat says, Lord, uh, but my eyes are upon you. Where are your eyes? Where are your eyes? Our eyes should be completely on the Lord. Jehoshaphat confessed that he was powerless and God is all powerful. He confessed that. Worship is a time to keep our focus on Jesus. Worship brings us to, into the presence of God. It prepares our heart to dwell in his holy presence. All our singing, all our lifting up of our hands, if none of those things are coming, taking us more closer to God, something is wrong. Maybe our focus is not there. Our focus should not be in anything other than our complete surrender of ourselves to God. At this stage of our prayer time, we need to forget about dealing with our own, dealing with your own sin or your failures or your weakness. Allow your heart to reach out to God and touch Him. You know, sometimes the enemy would come as you try, when you are trying to pray, sometimes the enemy comes and says, you know, you, you, uh, you don't deserve to come before God in prayer. You, you, you have this going wrong. You have done this bad thing. You know, all those accusations may come against you. Especially, very especially when you're about to pray. When you are about to come close to God, the enemy will come and try to rob you of your faith and throw you down and condemn you. But forget about that. And 
and, and know that you are forgiven. Know that you are forgiven. I, you know, you might think, you know, when you are, uh, when you are, the, when you walk with the Lord a little longer, you won't feel condemned. No, you know, the enemy comes and he, he just attacks the most, most, the strongest of saints. He attacks with discouragement and, and judgment. We need to just allow the Lord to build us up and strengthen us. Don't allow the enemy to come and condemn you. You don't need to have a great voice to be a great worshiper. It is the posture of the heart that God looks for. It is not a, about singing at all. Worship can help melt away my feelings of in animosity. If you completely give yourself to the Lord in worship and prayer each morning. And, and uh, sometimes, uh, often what I do is I start speaking in the language of the Spirit. Starting with speaking in the language of the Spirit until I get you know, kind of like a bombing. I feel like warmed up in my heart. And then I talk to him. All animosity melts away. All kind of judgment and guilt and pain melts away. All shame melts away. Constant worship and praise as a way of life helps us to counteract every work of the enemy against us. See, when you tune in completely to the Lord, when, we, when you come before him and tune in completely to the Lord, the Lord comes and takes complete control over our lives and strengthens us by the power of the Holy Spirit. Another very important thing is uh, purity of heart. Purity of heart is a very important praying with pure impurity or unconfessed sin in our lives is one of the reasons for our prayers to be ineffective. You know, we have to confess, <coughs> we have to confess our sin to the Lord. That's very important. We need to confess our sin to the Lord and go before him in Isaiah 59 verse 1 to 1 and 2 says, Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. You know, when, when we have unconfessed sin, and then we try to forget about that and go, no, you cannot. You cannot just continue that way. It's important when you know that you have failed him to go before him and put your heart right before the Lord. It's very important. Unconfessed sin will always block us from our prayer lives and moving forward. Psalm 24 verses 3 to 4 says, Who may ascend the hill of the Lord, who may stand his holy place, stand in his holy place, he who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to an idol or swear by what is false. He will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God his Savior. So where to, to come into the presence of God, we need to cleanse our hearts. We need to cleanse our hearts and go before the Lord in prayer, you know. And uh, another important thing is uh, purity of heart and then be still before him. Be still before him. Second Chronicles 20 and verse 13 says, All the men of Judah with their wives and children and little ones stood there before the Lord. 
the the enemy <clears throat> forces were approaching King Jehoshaphat and his people were moving forward and they came to that point where they all stood before the Lord. They all stood before the Lord in and stood still. As Judah stood before the Lord, this means that they stood and waited in quietness before God, waiting for him to speak. We must learn to be a people who will stand before the Lord in absolute fear, in complete con confidence and trust in the Lord. You know, in, you know, sometimes what happens is when we speak negative things, we put everybody else and their faith into question. But when we quietly, instead of um, talking, instead of saying the wrong things, we confess the Lord and his word and our faith in him in prayer, God paves the way for us like he did for King Jehoshaphat. Became, becoming still, is a conscious choice we have to make, becoming still. Be still and know and allow our spirits to unite with his spirit. God says, be still and know that I am God. He told the children of Israel, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted. And I will do great and powerful things. The children of Israel were about to cross the Red Sea. And, the, and Pharaoh and his 600 soldiers, our, our chariots, had come and just about to overtake. They didn't know what to do. They were just, they were, they were so terribly, uh, the, terribly disposed before the enemy. And they just began to, uh, cry out uh, against Moses and say all kinds of things. And Moses said to them, be still, be calm, and know that he is God. He will fight for us. First thing we can do to be still is find a place, uh, a quiet place to pray. Find a quiet place to pray. And pray. Matthew 6 6 says, Jesus said, When you pray, go to your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is, in, who is unseen. Then your Father sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And that's what the Lord wants to do by the power of His Holy Spirit. If we would give in completely to the Holy Spirit. So um, let's let's uh, maybe we can stop here. Maybe we can stop here. Uh, and Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would help us understand and move by the power of your. Not only do we. Learn about that. We also pray, Lord, and learn how to pray powerfully. So give us your grace in the name of Jesus and lead us by the power of your spirit to follow you, Lord. I pray. Help us to follow you. Help us to sit before you, Lord, and walk with you. Praise your name, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, help us to keep our eyes on you, even over this season. Mm. God, even to, Lord, not look away, but to look to you, God. Mm. And Lord, to have such a deep desire and a passion to walk in prayer with you, to walk in communion with you. Lord, not just five minutes, ten minutes, but as a lifestyle. Lord, even, even pray when those who are watching tonight, Lord, that, Lord, would you even release the spirit of intercession over your church in this season? 
a deep, deep intercession, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Spirit, fall upon us, Lord. Lord, uh, wake the church. Oh, come. Slumber. And Lord, we pray that you would put, fill our hearts with. Godly fear. Yes. Lord, uh, so many of us in the church today, we are sinning and, and just living as we did oh, nothing. Yeah. Bring, unto, bring back to yes. us, Lord, the fear of God. Yes. Godly fear, the reverence, the divine reverence. Yes. Lord. So Lord, we pray that as a as, as we, your children, gather together to pray that we would not just be jesting and having fun, but that we would come before you, knowing that we stand before a mighty and an awesome God. Oh, yes. Reveal your awesomeness. Yes, God, yes. We the Lord when, oh. when King Solomon dedicated oh. the temple. Your glory came upon that place that no one could, no one was able to stand, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, oh God, I pray in the name of Jesus, bring yes. back to yes. us. Yes. Yes. Forgive us, Lord. Yes. And bring us back to that place where we actually oh. are. Don't forget where we are and why we are there. <laughs> oh God, we thank you. Lord, we know that we are living in the last day. Yes. Bring back the fear of God yes. to your people and to your children. Yes. We cry out to you, Lord, with broken and contrite spirit. Have mercy. Oh. Have mercy on us. Yes. Forgive us. Lord. Yes, when John oh. saw you, oh Lord, he fell as if he was dead. Oh God, we pray in the name of Jesus. Stretch forth your powerful hand yes. and touch our hearts and yes. turn us around. Yes, God. Turn us completely around. Yes, Lord. Oh, maybe be a People of God, yes, Lord. And no oh, Jesus, forgive us, Father. Forgive us, Lord. You're walking in that familiarity. Yes, Lord. Oh, oh. oh. Jesus. You are the holy God. Oh, walk in us, Lord. Walk in that fear. Oh, God. We repent. As your church, we repent as your church. Jesus. Oh. oh, you who walk among the candlesticks, cool. most holy one, set us free. Yes, God. Let oh. Lord scale fall off our eyes. Yes. <laughs> Help us to see through your eyes. Yes, God. Oh God, and help us to see you. Lord. Oh God, some of us, because we don't see you, we think that you do not see us. You see our sin. Yes. To see who we are. But Lord, not that you don't see us. We don't see you, but you see us. And we forget the, that fact, Lord. And we just keep living, taking things for granted. We come before you, God, in the name of Jesus. 
have mercy. Free us. Let's kill all of our eyes. Open our eyes that we would see the way you would see. Think the way you would think. Oh God, we pray. Give us the newness, Lord, that we will be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Renew our minds, O oh Lord. Stretch forth your hand, Holy Spirit. Turn us completely around, I pray. In the name of Jesus. Oh, touch our heart. Transform us these days. Renew us. Teach us, O oh Lord, to, to crucify our hearts. Self. Oh God. Oh God. Oh Pour out your spirit. Oh, pour out your spirit. Help us to see your glory. Help us to see your glory. Please, oh God. Oh, Jesus. Oh Lord. Oh. Oh God. Oh Lord. Jesus. Oh. Let your church come back to that place of their first love, Father. Let your church come back to that place of their first love. Falling in love with that bride, not the bridegroom. A bride who loves her bridegroom. A bride who honors the bridegroom. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Let us walk in the fear of the Lord. Lord, in holiness, oh, cleanse our hearts, our minds. Lord, prepare us as your church. Prepare us, sanctify us. Lord. Draw us, Lord. Let the fire of the Holy Spirit burn the things that have distracted us, Lord. Lord, let our hearts be turned back, stir up. Stir up us up, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Lord, even convict us of the sin that we are living in. That our hearts will be repentant and turn back to you, Lord. That we will see the greatness and the glory of God. Oh, God. Lord. Let your church turn around, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Father. Oh, just you know, just keep praying as the as the Holy Spirit is 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 leading you. Even as we heard so much tonight. You know, maybe the Lord was speaking to many of you. Even, you know, finding that quiet place. Keep, you know, fo focusing our eyes on Him. You know, the godly fear and, you know, the posture of our hearts before Him. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Oh, we be with Oh, Rabbi. Oh, thank you, Father. 
such a such an important aspect of the the holiness and the fear of the lord especially in this season mm-hmm. coming back to that fear and walking in that fear mm-hmm. 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 You know, I hear the Lord saying to us, my children, I long to, to love you, to express my love to you. I long to pour my love and grace into your lives. But when you are preoccupied, when you fill up your minds with things, I am unable to get through to you. And I hear the Lord say, come back, return to that place where you used to be, where you took time to talk to me and allow me to talk to you. I'm surrounding you with my holy presence because I want to draw your attention to those things that you are failing to do. Return, my children, for I want to do a work, a special work in your heart by my spirit. You will gather around my presence and around my throne with godliness and godly fear. You will call upon me and I will answer you. And I will do great and mighty things that you have not yet seen. What you have already seen is nothing compared to what I have in store for you. Call upon me. Don't let anything draw you away and your preoccupied patience draw you away. Eat me with purity of heart because I want to pour out my love. I want to pour out my spirit. And I want to bless you and strengthen and anoint you and empower you to be the people that I want you to be. There's so much that I'm getting ready to do in your lives by the power of my spirit. Let me stretch forth my mighty arm and show the enemy forces that you are my beloved children and that I will never leave you nor forsake you. So draw close, draw nigh to me, throw everything aside and focus your eyes on me, says the Lord. Oh, in all of your glory. In all of your power, in all of your majesty, 
Pergi mas. Pergi mas. Pergi mas. Pergi mas. We went to the games we have played. Oh, 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 God! Oh, oh, God! Help us! We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. <laughs> Purify our hearts. Purify our hearts. <laughs> Forgive us from walking away from you. Yes. yes. Forgive us for putting ourselves before you, Lord. Forgive us for desiring those worldly things. Oh God, that we you don't want us to have. Work your work in us by your power and spirit, Lord. Praise. Oh. 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 Oh Lord, we receive that word. Oh, we receive and respond to you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Oh. Wow. Praise God. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. That's amazing. Just the heart of God. Amen. Yeah. Thank you so much, Pastor. Even for teaching us tonight and just leading us into the presence. Yes, so we'll pick up from there for our next one. And tomorrow we have a singer that can. Singer that can, Yeah. Yeah, so. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. And uh, we will connect. We will connect again. <laughs>